So last week, Topaz Labs updated their photo AI app to version 3.0. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you what's new and why you may wanna consider adding it to your photo editing workflow. I'm also gonna leave a link below so you can download the app for yourself and try it out for free. But let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a deeper dive video specifically on Photo AI 3.0. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna say about this update is that it mostly includes quality of life improvements. In other words, the changes you now have are designed to make your experience more consistent and enjoyable and customizable. There's also an improvement to the apps, adjust lighting and balance color AI models where you can now use them with raw files. And I'll show you what that looks like as well. So with that, let's jump in. All right, so here you can see this is Photo AI version 3.0, it's right up there. Um, and the first thing you'll notice actually is the app icon. So it looks like Topaz Labs is trying to unify around a new design language, not only with its app, but also with the app icon. So Photo AI, Video AI, and Gigapixel seem to have new icons that resemble this kind of blocky language. So that's the first thing there. Now, there is also a new UI for this app, or it's a refreshed UI, and it does also look like Topaz Labs is trying to kind of unify around a consistent uh, design layout and a UI framework. So I'm actually a big fan of that. I like when you switch from one app to another from the same developer that there is consistency there. So just wanted to bring that up. Now I mentioned that there are several quality of life improvements and the first one has to do with how you work with the AI models and the filters that are applied. So I have two photos here that will allow me to illustrate some of these updates. And the first one is a raw file. So you can see when I hover over it in the film strip, it has automatically applied raw denoise and sharpen. Now, when you click on one of the filters, so right here I clicked on raw denoise, You'll see on the left here, this column, kind of like a control panel for that particular filter. But what's cool is I can go ahead and I can take this and I can drag it anywhere I want. So you can customize kind of how you work with your app with this kind of draggable control panel. It's kind of cool. And you can, once again, kind of place it over here. You'll see this blue bar up here. And then when you let go, it'll be docked to the right. And you might've noticed before, but this kind of control panel is collapsible. So if I click on this, here you can see you get more screen real estate. So if you want to kind of survey the image, that's always helpful here. But all you need to do is click on either of these and then you can go ahead, you can drag it out. You can also click on the little ellipse over here and you have a few other options. So you can either hide it, you can remove it altogether, or you can go ahead and dock it to the sidebar. You'll see here there is this blue button which allows you to add different enhancements as well. So I have denoise and sharpening applied to this photo, but one of the things we can now do in Photo AI 3.0 is use the adjust lighting as well as the balance color filters here with raw files. So I mentioned this is a raw file, it's a Sony raw file. So let's go ahead here and I'm gonna click on adjust lighting. And you can see it, it does adjust the lighting here. And if I put it side by side, Let's just kind of put the bird over here. You can see basically what the original photo looks like and what the processed photo looks like. And again, because this has been updated to work with raw files, I can have that effect applied where it's using AI to adjust the tone of the photo. Let's go back to the full screen view here of the processed image. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on add enhancements and select balance color. Now, I'm gonna be straight up with you. I'm not a fan of this filter right now, at least how it's currently designed. Um, you can see over here, um, the result is, I don't know, you can you have the, the, these options here in terms of the temperature and the opacity, but if I hide this over here, this to me looks more natural. Um, and when I add the balance color, Hopefully they'll continue training the models and improving it. But right now, this is one thing where I can say, um, yeah, this is not to me optimal. And to be fair, for those of you who might know, I am red, green, colorblind. So I always take color with a grain of salt, but this just doesn't look right to me. Again, you could go ahead here. I can try to maybe uh, cool a little bit and see if that improves it. But Overall, um, this might be something that you'll want to reserve for your actual raw processing. And that is actually a good point because to be honest, historically, where Topaz Photo AI has kind of fallen into my personal workflow is um, 
It is amazing at noise reduction. I mean, that's where Topaz Photo AI really does shine because uh, it has some of the best noise reduction models I've, I've ever used. And that and its sharpening models have gotten a lot better. And then of course it's upscaling models. So if you need to increase the resolution of a photo, let's say you're working with a low resolution photo and you need to make it larger without sacrificing quality, Gigapixel 7, which I've uh, done a video on as well, or Photo AI, those are just, they're, they're excellent. So that's where it falls in. Where it doesn't fall in, for me personally, is I'm very, very particular um, and careful about uh, handing off things like tone and color adjustments, even to a raw file, to an app that is not my primary photo editing app, which is Lightroom. And so with that, I added these two filters here so that you can see them because they now work with raw files, but I generally do not uh, use these with raw files. I'm, I'm really happy, like what, I'll go ahead here and I'm gonna uh, zoom in to 200% and let's go side by side here. And let me just show you the effect of noise reduction and sharpening. I mean, it, it's really good, uh, especially when you look at the, the unprocessed version. I mean, it does a really nice job of cleaning it up. Of course, if sharpening is too strong, you can just click here. Again, we can go ahead and you know drag this out over here and I can reduce the sharpening if I want. Then let's go ahead here and we'll go to the panel and let's close it so we can see the image. And yeah, you can see this is really good. And so this kind of shows you where Photo AI really does shine. Now, one of the other new options that we have is the ability to save presets. So the preset functionality is kind of limited currently. I know that the company said that they are working on improving this and making it more robust, but where this comes into play is, especially if you have a bunch of photos, so let's just kind of go to see this image full screen here. You can see that I have raw denoise and sharpen as the active filters. When I go to save the preset, you can see that only sharpen is applied. And it has this message where it says, some enhancements were modified or removed so that your preset will work across multiple images. So what that means, what I assume it means currently is because the raw denoise model only works on raw files, if I were to open a JPEG file and then try to apply this preset, it wouldn't work because the raw noise reduction model only works for raw files. So I do hope we kind of see some improvements here because right now, if I go ahead and say uh, Brian's sharpen preset and click save, I mean, it, it just kind of saves that this uh, sharpen preset here. So it's it's not currently the most functional thing, but I am happy to see that they are working towards this. Uh, and hopefully we'll see some improvements to this in the future. Like there's no reason why um, if I save this preset and I open up a JPEG that the raw denoise should be replaced with regular denoise that would be applied to a non-raw file. Now, another thing that you can do, if I go ahead here really quickly and add that adjust lighting back, you now have the ability to reorder these filters. So let's say you want to have the lighting filter applied before sharpening. You can see here, there is this icon here, which indicates that you can drag. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this up top here. And the image gets processed accordingly. Now you can see if I go to save as preset, I now have adjust lighting and sharpen. I just wanted to show you that as well. So it does save any filter that can be applied to any image, but things like denoise, uh, will not be saved there. So just something to keep in mind. Now, another improvement that was added to Photo AI 3.0 has to do with the face recovery and preserve text features. Before, if you were working with a portrait photo that had multiple faces in it, you can only adjust the settings for all of the faces. Same thing with the preserve text tool. Now you can actually customize the settings for each face or text instance. So let me show you an example with a portrait photo. So. I grabbed this photo off of a free stock website and you can see here, let's just kind of show you the original. So this is a low resolution version of this image and it has been upscaled here. It's actually been upscaled uh, 6X. So um, you can see the resolution up here. It's much larger than the original, but where it gets really cool is with face recovery. So when I click on face recovery, you can see four faces have been detected. And because it has this yellow border, that means that all four faces have the face recovery filter applied. But let's say you want, for example, uh, just basically you wanna have a face recovery setting for this face, a separate one for this face, and so on and so forth. You can now do that and I'll show you how. 
So let's go ahead here, let's click on four faces selected. You can see when I hover over, the text turns blue. And now what I can do is let's start with this girl on the left here. So I'm gonna click on these faces and you can see how they get deselected. So now we only have just one active face. And you can see even here that it says recovering faces one out of four. Now what I can do is go to controls and let's say I wanna just back off just a little bit for this particular face. Now what I can do to add say face recovery to this person is go to add enhancements, face recovery, and then I'm gonna deselect these three people and just have this face enabled. And then here, let's say I wanna go ahead and I'm just gonna bring this back just a little bit further. And lastly, I'm just gonna have face recovery for these two people together. So let's go to add enhancement. We'll go back to face recovery. I'm gonna deselect these two people. And here I'll go to control and I'll back this off to say maybe 50% or so. And now you can see that I've independently adjusted face recovery for each of the people here. And if you hover over each of these filters and you click, you'll see which face is active. And so again, those are the, I would say the major features and improvements to Photo AI 3.0. Again, there are a lot of quality of life improvements that should make how you use the app more enjoyable. And I also have this video that you can check out if you want to learn more about Gigapixel AI 7.0. So that is kind of a dedicated app for upscaling. So if you just need to increase the resolution, you don't want to use any of the other filters, you should check that app out as well because it's really powerful. I'll leave a link to Photo AI 3.0 in the description below. You can download it and try it out for yourself. Of course, if you found this video helpful, a thumbs up is always appreciated. And please be sure to click on the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified of all future videos. Thanks a lot, everyone.